Well, greetings and grand rising, everyone, and good afternoon to those of us who are on the far, far east coast. Welcome to our Quantum Soul Alchemy, 30 Days of Filling into Abundance Challenge, where here we are manifesting our desired reality using our emotions and understanding our emotional center and how that is the driving force of how we interact with others and the environment. Today, we are going to be focusing on our lesson number 28, where we will be setting a sacred space. So if you have not been following along with us from day one, you can gain access to all of our recorded videos as well as the um, sound bath and meditation sessions by visiting our website and registering for our free course. It is at whliam.com. Again, that's www.whliam.com forward slash courses. That's C-O-U-R-S-E-S. And you'll just click on the Quantum Soul Alchemy course. And once you are approved for the course, you'll gain access to the videos as well as our group discussion. So you can ask questions in the group. You can also speak with me one on one by sending me a message if you'd like, um, you know, more detailed or uh, more personal information regarding your journey on this manifestation challenge. Okay. So we'll get started with our intro here. So our sacred space is essentially a sanctuary within the home, or it could be in your car, it could be at your workplace, depending upon how um, high the area traffic is in that workspace. So just be, a, you wanna be aware of that and we'll go through those steps later. But it is a place where you can connect with your inner self, where you can meditate, where you can pray, or you can engage in any type of spiritual practice that brings you peace and balance. So this will be your sacred space. And it is important to have a, a dedicated area that focuses on your spiritual growth as well as your emotional healing, okay? So this will be a space where it, it'll serve as your grounding point where you can center yourself away from all of the you know mundane or even the chaos that goes on within our daily lives. So when you are choosing that space, you want to be aware of that. Also, it's an area for your spiritual connections, right? So if you are an individual that prays, then you would want a sacred space to where you can speak to God, you know, without the interruptions or a space where you know that you can go, where you're automatically be, be at peace, excuse me, where you're automatically be in a, a peaceful state of mind or a peaceful energy because you know this is the space where I won't be disturbed. You already have that in the back of your mind. So there won't be any type of anxious feelings when you're going into that area or going into that space. That's one of the reasons why it's important to have a space that is dedicated. Now, um, intention setting, that's another um, feature of having a sacred space or even a dedicated sacred space. It's where you can understand your energy there is going to be focused. So it's sort of like, I'm ready to work in this space, not necessarily do work work, but I'm ready to focus on my spirituality in this space. So I know in my mind, I've already trained myself that I'm not going to waver and think about different things or that grocery list while I'm in my sacred area, so to speak. So if you do have your quantum soul alchemy journal, then we will be looking at our, um, Best location, setting up, activation, and maintenance. So we'll um, put those three in one as we go through our list. So if you do not have your journals, you can still grab them. They are available on our website at whliam.com and our shop. They're also available on amazon.com. And we have some handouts that are in the course online as well. So we will be going through that today as we will be looking at um, choosing your sacred space, how to cleanse it, how to dress it. If you're looking to set up an altar, we will be covering that as well. So this will be in your journals and we are on page 126. So for those of you who may not have your journals available, this is what it looks like. Okay. All right. Now your journals, they can come in. They, we have two covers for options of your, your choosing. You have a darker cover version here designed by myself, of course, <laughs> and light of cover here, also designed by yours truly. They come in um, paperback and hardcover. Okay. So we'll start with um, creating your sacred space is your home for spiritual development, 
as a powerful way to enhance your practice and deepen your connection with your inner self and the universe. This space serves as a sanctuary for meditation, reflection, and personal rituals, helping you to focus your energy and intentions on your spiritual journey. So choosing a space, you want it to be quiet and undisturbed, if possible, quiet and undisturbed. I know those of us who have young ones running around the house, it's quite um, challenging to find any space, <laughs> even in your own room or, or the bathroom, that would be quiet and undisturbed. But um, make the effort because your spiritual team, if you are working with other, de other deities, they will understand. They, they're working with you. They know your life. So if you're making the intention, which again, we spoke about intention, they understand. So God understands your intention behind you setting the sacred space, knowing that you, know, you have individuals in the home that would likely disturb it. But we understand you making the intention, you're setting the intention that this is an area that I will be using for spiritual work. That matters. So your intention matters. Um, you know that, let's see, if the space is limited in the home, choose a small corner or a room that is um, that has a dedicated tabletop space. That's if you're setting up an altar. So I have it um a makeshift altar here where I will be going through some steps on how you can set your altar up. But um, it's not always necessary or it may not be feasible for you to have a table at this time. You can just choose a corner of the room and set some pillows there, or you can dress up the walls with um, different pieces of cloth. You can even section off a corner, and, you know, setting up the cloth sort of like in a triangle shape. So your cloth would go over the widest section of the corner, so to speak, to, to sort of block off that area. So this that's one way you can set the intention that this particular corner is going to be a sacred space. So you don't necessarily have to have a room separate from everything, and you don't need a tabletop for that. You're working within your means, and that's okay. Again, intention is what matters here. So you're going to, next, you want to cleanse your area. Now, when we spoke about our candle magic um, lesson, we learned about saging and different items and herbs you could use to smudge your areas, to cleanse the energy within that area. And so we briefly spoke about pine needles. So pine needles is wonderful for ridding the area of negative energies, stale energies. So you can use pine needles for that. Of course, you would just... Um, light it a fire, gently blow it out. Now, pine needles, they will light high. So what I mean by high, they're going to burn high. Your flame will be, could be six, seven inches high. So just be aware of that when you are lighting pine needles specifically, okay? Now, you can also use sage, palo santo, or incense to cleanse your area. And you want to focus on cleansing negative energy. When we're doing negative energy cleanses, you want to have an open door to the outside. You also, or you could use an open window to the outside, but there needs to be a way for that smoke to exit the home or exit that area. So if you're in a room that does not have any windows or doors um, to the outside, then you can open the door to that room to another room that must have a door or window that opens to the outside. And a fan helps wonders in sort of directing that smoke, the energy, the stale energies towards that other room and outside that window or door. But there must be a way for that smoke and stale energy to exit that space. OK. Now, um, if your smoke cleansing is not available, so if you're not able to do your smudging with the smoke or with an herb, then you can use vibrational sounds. This is what we do in sound therapy. We are reading the area of, or the body, or cleansing the body of negative stale energies and bringing in healing energies. So you can use chimes or bells or your singing bowls if you have those available. If you do not have singing bowls available, then you can just play our video sounds using your phone. That vibrational tone is still a frequency and it will still hit that area. So you can use your electronic device to play the sounds that would allow you to read that area of the negative energy. Um, we also have spritz 
or natural cleansers. If you would like crystal water, then we can speak one-on-one -on -one about how to create crystal water. Now, I also have um, a few instructions on my website under the crystal healing therapy if you're looking to do crystal water, but you can use um, quartz crystal. So you would essentially put your quartz crystal in a bottle of, of water or spritz of water, and you can set it in the sunlight for a full eight hours. And you would also want it to sit under the moonlight for at least a full three to four hours under moonlight. So um, sunlight, daylight for at least eight hours and then moonlight. So you can pretty much leave it outside for four hours. That's that's generally what I do. But if you're you know want you want to be specific on time, then we're looking at eight hours of sunlight or daylight and three to four hours of moonlight. And you would want your quartz water to sit during that time. And once you've completed that time frame, then you can pour it into a spritz bottle and you're able to spray the area and cleanse it using your crystal water. You'd want to use the water up within 10 days because after 10 days, then it can go stale. Um, there are also properties in the water that could create bacterial growth. So you don't want to use it past 10 days unless you're using a preservative. And again, we can speak about that later one on one if you want to learn about the different ways to preserve your crystal water. But for general purposes, 10 days or less, use that water. OK, so now that we've discussed cleansing your area um, or choosing your your location, we're going to move towards setting the ambiance. OK, so we're at the bottom. We're still on page 126. We're in the last paragraph here. So you want to use comfortable cushions or a mat for seating, and you can add elements like dim lighting or candles. Again, during our candle magic ceremony, we discussed how you can set up and dress your own candles for whatever purpose you desire, whether it's magic or not, or if you're just, you know, um, cleansing the area or just blessing your, your environment, you know, something along those lines. So you can use your candles that you've dressed also, Wholesome Healing has crystal candles. So we have candles online that are available that help to invoke love and connection and relationships. That is our pure love candle. We also have a candle for abundance, and that is available on our website at whliam.com. So these candles include crystals, herbs, and essential oils to invoke and cleanse and bless the area. So setting the ambiance. You would also want to use different elements that bring you peace or joy. So we're moving into setting up your altar where you can set the ambiance by, again, adding different crystals or even different lighting tools. So I have a lighting globe here that I use during our meditations, and this helps to set the ambiance of the space. So if you're a person who loves color light, such as myself, then you can grab one of these globes on amazon.com. It was fairly cheap. I believe it might've been around $10 or something of that nature. Um, might've been $10. But um, yes, those help to set the mood, the ambiance of the area. And also we know light helps to invoke certain moods within the body itself. So for example, red can bring you energy, the fire to get you started. So using color light helps as well. Now, you can also incorporate nature into your area. So um, as we were meditating with nature, meditating with our flowers, I had my sunflower plant with me during our last nature meditation. And prior to that, I had my grass plant with me. So you can bring in elements of nature, flowers, tulips, things that you love, even a bowl of sand for those who love the beach and want to invoke um, seashells and um, waves within their altar or their sacred space. So use those elements that you know are driving your energy to peace, that drives your mind to peace, that helps you feel spiritual. Many people are connected to water. That is their spiritual element. So you may love to bring in items that are related to the beach or islands or even palm trees or coconuts. Anything of those natures can help you to bring your particular altar or sacred space to an, a level that allows you to immediately think or feel spirituality once you enter that space or sit down in your area. Now, you can also bring bowls of water. So that's one I did not think. So yes, bowls of sand, but also bowls of water. 
and you can use flower petals in the bowl instead of using an entire plant. So if you don't have the option or the space for plants, or let's say you are sensitive to pollen, but you love the look of flowers or plants, then you can just rinse the petals off gently and dry the petals and use those to decorate your area. Um, so let's see, we have alternate touches for your area. You can decorate it with artwork, statues, symbols of artwork. So let's look at a few. Now I have this statue here. It is a Polynesian statue where I received or obtained from Hawaii when I visited. And it represents good luck. So um, this is my good luck tiki statue and I keep this on my altar. So things like this where it may not be very expensive or significant to other people, but it brings you that feeling of good luck and joy and peace. Because thinking back in Hawaii, that was a wonderful visit, you know, a wonderful vacation for me. So it brings me back into that mindset of, wow, this is where I'm in touch with nature, in touch with water, in touch with, you know, the history of that culture. So I love to keep this on my altar. And you may have small significant items like that or, um, you know, keepsakes from family members. You can set up your altar and have your ancestors on there. So um, grandparents that you had a special connection with where you feel that they are with you during your spiritual walk, then yes, place their photographs on your altar. Give them a little section in your sacred space, knowing that they are supporting you. They are walking with you in your life. So these are other additional touches that aren't necessary for everyone, but it can help add special, special touches to your particular space. Okay, now let us pull out our table here. Can you see? Okay. Yes. So when you're setting up your altar, you just need a, a space. It, it doesn't matter how large or small it is. It just depends upon what your needs are at this point in time. Because this at one point in time was my altar. It was I knew it was temporary, but I needed an altar. So because I do a lot of spiritual work, but you know, I grabbed this. It's just a regular um, TV table and you just put your cloth on it or whatever altar cloth you choose. You can, you know, buy altar cloth. You can make one, you know, to add that significance to your own type of um, elements and things of that nature. So now other things that I keep are items that would help to protect or cleanse the space of the altar. So we know of the evil eye, but it's really not an evil item. Now the evil eye offers protection. So it's not necessarily that someone has been cursing you or sending you negative energy. You can use it for the purpose of just bringing you positive energy, keeping you in a positive state of mind. And that helps when you're doing your spiritual work to remain in a positive state. So yes, you can use or dress your altar with different items that help to bring you peace. So again, I'm bringing out my good luck tiki statue. Now, of course, I always have my water. So I use my hydrogen water system. I keep this on my altar when I'm doing my altar work or near my altar when I'm doing my altar work. And the reason being is the water quality in pretty much every place on the planet now has been contaminated in some way, form or fashion by a lot of pollution. So the quality has gone down, especially in our natural resources. And you know, previously in the early times when water was available at, you know, pretty much it, when water was readily available, we had sources within it or nutrients within it that allowed us to heal, allowed our bodies to heal and function at its optimum. But now we have to infuse our water or cleanse our water. Now, the hydrogen water system puts hydrogen back into water or infuses the water with um, elevated levels of hydrogen. This is what natural water used to be like. But nowadays, because of the pollution, because of our contaminants, it has destroyed a lot of the hydrogen within the water. We know that hydrogen offers benefits within the body, such as, or hydrogen water offers benefits, such as reducing blood pressure. It helps to um, control your blood sugar. It helps with weight loss. So these are things that used to be available readily when you could just put a cup of water in a river or a stream. But now we have systems that we must rely on to help increase the quality of our water. 
So my hydrogen system does that. And this is Luma Vitae hydrogen water system. And we have been studying, you know, using medical studies to understand how beneficial hydrogen is, which is why we know how it benefits the body, especially with cellular degeneration. It helps to repair your cells. So the oxidization, it helps to alleviate all of those issues. So your cells are healthier. Your, your cells last longer in terms of lifespan. And your body heals faster because your cells are stronger, pretty much. They are healthier. So our Luma Vitae system is designed to keep the optimum amount of hydrogen within this water because hydrogen is the smallest atom. It is the smallest atom. It is the smallest molecule that we know of in this universe. That's as far as we know, it is the smallest molecule. And when we are opening these bottles, it can escape readily. So it's important to have a system that not only infuses the water, but also maintains the levels of hydrogen that you need in order to um, obtain the medical benefits of hydrogen in your water. So this is why this system is so great. So I use this system. I also sell this system and I advise my clients on how to use this system. And if you want to learn more about that, you can visit my website where I link to all of our medical studies. And that is whliam.com forward slash Lumavitae. That's L-U-M-I-V-I-T-A-E. Okay. And I have a link to that at the very top of my web page. So if you forget the, the web address and I also have one, I'll have one in this description of this video. So if you, um, I'll try to remember to put that in there. Okay. So I keep my hydrogen water in there because hydrogen water is life for me. I drink that I, every day I'm on my hydrogen water. I also have a ceramic saucer. Now this is where I place my candles for my work. So it just depends on what type of, um, plate that you would like to use. I always recommend ceramic. Now, um, these plates can get very hot. So you want to be sure that underneath you have, um, you know, something safe to protect the wood or the, if the surface of your altar is metal, then you want to have something in between your plate and your metal surface. So that's why a cloth or an altar cloth is so beneficial because it helps to um, keep things from getting too hot or that heat transfer and burning yourself. I also use chime candles, so I have chime candle holders. I always keep these on my altar because it's, they're readily available. Um, I always dress in crystals. Now, my selenite helps to um, bridge communication. So between me and um, spiritual beings, I use selenite for communication. Our quartz crystal helps to cleanse the energy of any of the work that I'm doing on my altar. So I always love to keep our quartz crystal there. My smoky quartz helps to absorb and remove the negative energies that I'm working with that may come about during my altar work. Of course, when we're doing altar work, we are releasing energies. We are, you know, assigned or aligning with our spiritual team so that we can create better energy within ourselves. Sometimes that requires you to let go and cleanse your own energies. So you need a space or a place for that to go. You want it to, um, anything that may be um, residual or residue of energies can go into your quartz, um, your smoky quartz crystal. Of course, your spiritual team may be there to help usher a lot of that energy out. But of course, you want to do your part too, which is why you have a sacred space in the first place. You're setting your intention to show, I'm willing to do the work to help me get into a better state of mind. And of course, your spiritual team is there to help you or the energetic properties of the universe are there to help you. So you want to do your part too. Oh, of course, I keep my smudging stick there. And, you know, that pretty much sets up my altar. So it just depends. Um, now, depending upon what type of work I'm doing, of course, I'll bring in the candles and the other herbs that are needed for the work. But this is pretty much the basic set up for my altar. So you you see, it's not anything that's too, um, you know, out of the way. It's not anything too fancy. And that's the thing. You don't have to have a fancy setup for your altar if you're setting up an altar in your sacred space. Just whatever works for you in that space and in that time. Because again, 
you can always change it, advance to different techniques. And if you're, you know, learning different spirituality practices, you're going to bring in more. You may change the whole setup. So it just depends. Go with what is working or what you need at this moment in this time. You don't have to try to be um, someone with a very fancy or a very large altar. That's not necessary. Okay. So when we're looking at setting up our sacred space and we've gotten all of the elements that we want to bring into our sacred space, whether it's pillows, dressing, or an actual altar, you want to hold a ceremony to dedicate the space to your spiritual work. So this is where you are setting the overall intention of what you wish to achieve and cultivate in your space. So what does, you know, um, uh, an activation look like when you're doing your, um, your spiritual work? It's just pretty much you lighting a candle or you saying a prayer or how about just writing a poem. Now, through our work throughout these, you know, 27 days, 28 days, we have done a lot of journaling together. So if you're looking to set up some sort of special ceremony, then I would advise you to go ahead and write in your journal. Just put your energy, your um, thoughts out on the paper as to what you would like your ceremony to to um, to express in that moment. What do you want a dedication ceremony to your altar to look like? Start from there and then write a poem about those emotions you just expressed. When you say, I want my altar ceremony to be, you know, full of life, full of joy, happy, and then just write a poem about joy, happy, and life. It doesn't have to be anything deeper than that, because this is literally what you expressed in that moment of what you would like your altar to ceremony to look like. Then go with that. Don't try to, again, be all fancy because that's unnecessary. This is your intention and that is what matters. So after you do your ceremony, then you're looking at ongoing maintenance. So every day or once a week, visit this altar, visit this space, say a quick prayer or a thank you or show some gratitude in some way, add more flowers or fresh flowers, add fresh dirt, fresh sand, sprinkle or spritz um, or spray your crystal water, something where you can continue to maintain the positive energy in this space so that when you know you're ready to work, when you know you have the time to dedicate to it, your space will be ready for you. So, Now that also works, as I stated, when you're using this area that is already in another room. So if you're setting up a corner space, then yes, it is important again to do your maintenance at that time because you're using a, a multi-purpose room for your spiritual work. So that is another point. And I'm glad I went over that again because that was important. When you are using a space that is um, encompassing a lot of other activities, you wanna be sure you're maintaining the spiritual area, the spiritual cleanse, the cleanliness in that sacred space. Again, um, just reminding you, your intention is what matters when you are doing this spiritual work, when you're setting your, your sacred space. We're not looking, or your spiritual team is not looking for you to be perfect, just looking for you to show the effort that you're ready to do the work and you're able to do the work, no matter how short a span of time you spend in that area. It's your intention. That's what matters. So as we conclude our lesson on setting your sacred space, um, you know, choosing your location, setting up your altar, if you're doing an altar or dressing your area, activating it and maintaining it, then just understand this again is your personal spiritual journey. This is your personal energetic journey. This is your personal manifestation journey. So your intention, your, your value is driven by your intention. So you're going to show how you value your spiritual walk by what you do. And I want you to be sure that you're ready for this type of spiritual activation before you start adding those things and going into sacred space work. Just be sure that this is what you truly want to do at this point in time. And if you are unsure, or if you want to get a bit more personal advice 
go ahead and register for the course so that you can speak with me one-on-one -on -one and we'll go through different steps. And you may not be ready for a sacred space at this time. That's okay. This might not be a part of your spiritual journey and that is okay too. So, but yes, you're still welcome to reach out to me and we can discuss how you can go forward with your manifestation journey if you're not ready to do a sacred space or build an altar at this time. So join us tomorrow at 11 a.m. for our day number 29. So 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. 